Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Uncle John's Arm Wrestling Show. Hope the day finds you well. Uh, pay no attention to the giant stack of paintings behind me. My wife and I are doing a little reorganization of the house, so they're here for one episode and one episode only. On to the show. Today is a bit of a first. Uh, well, not a bit of a first, but really is a first. Uh, it's the first time we're doing a patron request video. Now, basically what that means is a few weeks ago, Patreon member Gainesville Josh, he requested a video discussing how to develop a lock for arm wrestling. I thought that was a pretty interesting topic, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, if you are interested in requesting a topic for the show, head on over to the Uncle John's Arm Wrestling Show Patreon page at the link in the description. Become a Maximum Uncle Level Patron to unlock the ability to directly contact me and request a topic that you want to be made into a full-length Uncle John's Arm Wrestling Show episode. So, today we discuss the lock in arm wrestling. What it is, how to develop it, how to get into it, and how to get out of it. Now, I haven't done a ton of training tips type videos, mainly because there's a lot of other channels, specifically like the voice of arm wrestling and Paul Lynn, and they do a lot of that stuff, and frankly, they probably do it a little bit better than I do. However, I do think that there is a bit of worth in having a plethora of opinions and perspectives out there in the information marketplace. So as you watch this video, do what I do. Take what information works for you and use it. The stuff that doesn't, put it away. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to believe anything I say, head on over to Coach Ray, Giannis, Paul Lynn, and any of those other great guys and listen to them first. So what is a lock in arm wrestling? Well, there's really two types of locks which are generally discussed among arm wrestlers. The first being a bone lock, which is, isn't really what we're going to be discussing today. The bone lock is something that's most often associated with the king's move, and it usually occurs in arm wrestlers who have sustained some significant injuries to their arms over time, which then changes the arm structure to the point where the arm cannot fully open due to bone meeting bone, hence bone lock. Now, the type of lock we're discussing today is one that's primarily developed through the strengthening of the muscle and tendons over time. This strengthening results in a sticking or locking spot where the puller feels stronger in a position which is usually on the losing side of the table. Now, before we go too far down the rabbit hole of what the lock is, where, how you get into it, how you get out of it, I went to Minnesota over the holidays and talked to one of the best hook lock guys that I personally know, and that person is multi-time national champion Josh Handlin. So let's take a look at what he has to say about how he works on his lock. All right, so today we're talking about the lock and how some arm wrestlers are able to be in a losing position and when they get here, they get immensely strong. And for me as, as the attacker, to get through this is very difficult. So I've come all the way to Minnesota to talk to Josh Handlin, my old training partner, about his lock because he has one of the most frustrating locks uh, I've ever seen. So when you think about your lock, what, are the, what is like the main thing that attributed to developing it. I'd say static holds. Like, like mm -hmm. I hold a lot in this position, right? So, like mm -hmm. in the gym, I always people do different ways. But I always I used to lean over on the preacher bench, so my forearm was parallel with the floor. Yep. So all the way to my arm is not on my elbow, and then just holds for for time or. So so let's so since everybody loves the minutia of training, when you're doing the holds, are you holding it in in this this position? Are you doing it uh, uh, supinated? I used to always do palm up, so palm it'd be like up? I'm in the hook. Like, okay, I don't know right. if that's the best way, but for holding in the hook, I'd say that's a really good way. I mean, obviously, it mimics the, the holding. So right, and everybody's going to be a little bit different. But for you, did you do like multiple sets of like 20 seconds with super heavy weight, or was it up to a minute, two minutes? How long? I never did like two minutes or even more than 30 seconds probably i used to when i at a certain point in my arm wrestling career i used to train with someone else so we time each other it's hard to time it if you're by yourself always but we do we just do three sets and we do 20 seconds or no i think it was 30 and then we'd put increase by five pounds 25 and then 20. i think it was it was five seconds less each time with five more pounds away i think that was the times mm -hmm. and then and then back then we used to do three sets or uh this way too and our rest would be where the other guy was going so i'd hold 
whatever, 85 yeah. pounds for 30 seconds, and then he'd do it, and then we'd switch. So you were also so doing it, was only eight, 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 you weren't taking huge rests in between no, either, no. so you're going and going. Yeah. How many, do you remember how many sets, like, are you doing it, like, five times in a row, back and forth? Uh, back then it was three, but it was three, back then it was palm up, and then, or, um, top roll position, and then, yeah. and then this way, so it was three each way. Yeah. Uh, back when I was, I would say, at my, at my strongest for holding, for sure, was, like, 2014, and, um, I would do. I wouldn't really count sets. I would just do until I felt like I had I about to die. Usually, and you, I'd be like on arm day, so I'd do like a bunch of partial curls and a bunch of other stuff, and then I'd go do that at the end. Mm. Probably, five, probably five sets, I would say. Five and sets. back then, I, it was like I wasn't really timing it as much because like if I'm holding it and I'm looking in the mirror, unless there's like a clock behind me, it's hard to time it. Right. It probably it was last. It was last time even. It was probably well, I was going as heavy as I could because I wanted to keep going heavier. So it was probably ten seconds sometimes. A lot of times. So if somebody is, is new to the sport or they haven't really tried static holds for, for a guy like because at that point you were in the 54 65 pound area what is a, a, a heavy weight for you at that point? Um, when I was like 54 I'd say with my arm parallel, parallel to the floor so I wasn't like cheating or anything I'd probably hold 90-95 pounds for 10 seconds Okay. Yeah. So when you're out of the gym, then you you've done all these. Is there anything on the table when you're practicing in the table? Did you find yourself doing a lot of pulling in this position where you're just locked yeah, in and then just left, left? Yeah, I don't think this is the best move. But my arm, my left arm likes to open up, so I'd actually do my holds with like my arm opened up, which I don't know if that's good because yeah. it developed a bad muscle memory, or maybe that's how my muscles were before. Mm -hmm. But so I started trying to hold it tighter, even though I wasn't able to hold as much. Mm -hmm. I feel I felt like my hold was really strong, but the the problem is, for me, when I'm holding in that position too, is I get there and I can hold, but it's hard to bring someone back from there. Unless right. I'm just way stronger than you. So that's why we're going to talk now about how to get into your lock position and then how to get out of your lock position. So, to recap, Josh highlighted two main ways in which he developed his lock. First, he'd spend a lot of time in the gym doing static holds. So he would hold heavy weight of around 100 pounds or so, and then he would hold those weights in a static position at a preacher bench for varying amounts of time. Now, Josh used a 3x3 three three method where he would alternate between supinated and, supinated and pronated positions, resting only as long as his partner's set would last. Second, Josh spent a lot of time focusing on his lock during arm wrestling practice. Now, I remember when we were training together back in the day, he would hold me in that deep hook position until I tired out, and then he would just drive across the table over and over and over again. Having the ability to fight in the losing position over a long period of time is really going to help your lock immensely. Don't give up so easily during training sessions. Fight it. Hold it. In, learn to enjoy that uncomfortable feeling. Don't give up. So there's a couple pointers on how to develop your lock, but... Once you've developed it, you got to be able to get into it and then get out of it. So how do we go about doing that? Well, getting into a lock position generally happens in one of two ways. First, you get outpowered by your opponent, but you're able to stop them in a losing position thanks to your lock. This is called being forced into your lock. Secondarily to that, you can actually choose to get to your lock position. Now. I see this and do this mostly when I know my opponent has a more powerful start than I do. For me, this is what I do when I'm going for a defensive top roll. We're going to talk about this more as we go. But let's take a step back and talk about this choose word. Of course, the word choose has been related lately to choosing whether or not you let your hand go. And that has been a source of great uh, catastrophic happenings on Facebook regarding uh, Mr. Ryan Bowen and his ideas. But what am I talking about choosing? Well, before any match starts, I choose where I intend my hit to go. All right? I can choose for my hit to go forward. I can choose for my hit to go backwards. And depending on my plan, according to who my opponent is, that will change. So let me give you a visual example of this. All right. So as a top roller, my goal is to take the hand of my opponent. That's my number one goal. However, let's say in this case, my opponent is significantly stronger than I am off the go. They're faster, they're stronger, they've got it all. So I'm not going to choose to go into them. I'm going to choose to hit into my lock position, which happens to be backwards. Okay? Stay with me. Now, by choosing 
choosing to hit backwards, I can do two things in relation to what's happening in the match. Number one, I am doing everything I can to get him away from his power and his body, okay? I'm dragging towards me. Number two, I'm setting up my lock position. As a defensive top roller, my lock position is back and in like this, okay? So if I'm pulling back, whoop, there we go. Now I can sit and he can pound on my arm in this position. I know a lot of people, their lock is here. Mine's here. I don't know why. It's just the way it works. Okay, so to recap briefly, either you're going to be forced into your lock position, which is not great. Uh, if I had a choice between being forced and going there purposely, I'm going to go there purposely every single time. So either you're forced or you make that choice to get there. So now you're in your lock position. Great. What the hell are you going to do? So as I see it, once you get to your lock position, you have two goals. Goal number one, maintain that lock. Protect the lock at all costs because if you've already gotten into that position, you are on the losing side, you must be prepared to fight with everything you have. Secondarily, but just as important, you need to start stealing the power from your opponent. Every second that your opponent spends fighting with your lock, their gas tank is going down. Now, you're going to feel their power slowly decrease over time. Even though you're in a losing position, what the lock allows you to do is to maintain that position while expending a lower amount of energy. And this allows you to trick your opponent into overexerting themselves. So, number one, remember, maintain that lock. Number two, start draining their power. Like a blood-sucking leech, you slowly and you carefully wait until your opponent has worn themselves out and the power which you once feared has been sapped from their soul and given to you. Then you proceed to smash them into the table. It's easy. So, number one, get to your lock. Number two, maintain that lock. Number three, suck that energy. That's all you gotta do. One, two, three. So, there you have it. It's a whole bunch of info on the arm wrestling lock. Now, I know there are probably a lot more pro tips out there that I didn't mention or that I don't even know, but this is probably enough to get you on your way. Now, always remember to choose where you hit to. It's your choice, not your opponent's choice. Maintain the lock, weather the storm, suck the life from your opponent, achieve glory. So I hope you guys all enjoyed the show today. I hope you got something out of it. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in making a request, go and check out the Uncle John's Arm Wrestling Show Patreon page at the link in the description. Again, thanks to our Maximum Uncle Patron, Gainesville Josh, for re recommending this topic. And we'll see everybody next time. Maximum effort. Uncle John's Arm Wrestling Show would also like to thank Ready Go Solutions, our newest Maximum Uncle member.